Boots and Heels. We're glad you joined us. I'm Boots. And I'm Heels. Oh gosh, my heart is just bleeding for the tornado victims. I mean, it literally went across, what, six states? And yeah. did so much devastation and so much destruction. I uh, just want you know everybody out there to know that we are praying and that we are you know, sorely sorry for yeah, all of those people who lost their loved ones and lost their family members and definitely for the you know, for the ones that are injured. There's a lot I know of them. One thing that I've learned and yeah. from going up and working relief at, after the, the Joplin F5 is, is you can look yeah. at the radar and you can think, oh, but I don't see anything. And oh, yeah. it's not doing anything here. Yeah. And, and get in your car or go out. And then suddenly it can change on a dime. Oh, you know, tornadoes are deceiving. They right, really are deceiving. Much. So when the, mean, when there's a warning, you need to take that serious. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody take it very, very serious. But what a terrible, terrible thing. This close to the holidays too. I mean, it just, just I mean, horrible. not that it matters. It, it's terrible any time of year, but you know, you're getting ready for Christmas and you, you know, you're buying gifts for those people and, and then, then you don't have those people to give those gifts to. So again, our hearts go out to those victims and uh, the, the, the fam families of the loved ones um, very much so. Absolutely. Just, just our thoughts things. and our prayers are, are with yeah. all of you out there. Absolutely. Um, kind of wanted to bring up, um, really just kind of want to bring up several things that too while we're doing this today, but um, the school shooting in Oxford. Um, people... <sighs> Take note yeah, it's just, of your children and your children's mental state. It's yeah, very important, especially if you're going to have weapons in your home. Yeah. We keep harping about this. Yeah, we do. And it all comes down to personal accountability yeah. and responsibility of parents of the children in the home. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to do any finger pointing, you know, because I know that I mean, it's hard for a parent to imagine that their children would, would, or a child would ever do anything like that. But still, you know, there's signs. And I'll tell you, uh, from what I've read and everything that I learned about it, I mean, the, the, the parents were called to the school the very day. They'd actually bought the gun on Black Friday, and then four days later, they were called to the school over a very disturbing picture of a person that was shot dead. And then, of course, uh, the, the kid was saying, um, I can't stop these thoughts or something uh, similar to that and help me and um, you know so that you know instituted the, the the school to get a hold of the parents to bring them in and then they issued to the parents that a warning they had to have a psych eval done on that kid within 48 hours now if you think it's important enough to have a psych eval done on a child uh, within 48 hours why in the world would you leave him in the school at all we now have a lack of, of responsibility by parents in general um, with with the children that they bring into the world. and But they're going to be responsible now because the prosecuting attorney yeah. has filed charges well, against you know, these people. Well, they're also looking at the school and what they did wrong. I mean, from everything that I've read, the school did a lot of things right leading up to this. They even had you know additional resource officers, at least one and, and possibly another one, um, or maybe even two more. But they and also, in, in the meetings with, with the parents, et cetera, the, the school resource officer had nothing to do with that. Here's what it has to do with, is if, if you see a note like that and you think it's important enough to tell the parents that they have to have this kid under psych eval within 48 hours why in the world would you leave him in the presence of uh, right. other children and leave him on the school right. grounds why would the parents leave him and why would the school allow it and then of course why wouldn't they they go and look in his locker look in his backpack the day before he was caught googling ammo which you know, lots of kids Google ammo if they've right. got guns and there's guns in the in the home. So maybe that wouldn't have thrown such a huge red flag. But with that coupled with the fact the very next day that there's this disturbing fit picture found, I mean, if this had been a, a, a picture of somebody with a bomb, there was a, a, or a bomb threat, the first thing that they would have done is go and check the backpack, check all, the entire school would have been locked down and they would have checked right. that school, the backpack and the locker, everything for a bomb. So why is there a difference here? I right. mean, I don't understand this. I think it was um, a big, huge, major fail for all of them, parents as well as the school. Um, yeah, and, and there's a lot of people that lost their, their, their kids, four kids and- Four and seven injured. Yeah, four but and seven injured. at the same injured. time, I am not in any way, yeah. shape, or form for, I'm very much against all red flag laws, very yeah. much against. But here we have a young person, a person that's not of age, that's still a ward of their parent. Yeah. And ultimately, 
I'm of the belief that that it's the parents' ultimate responsibility in this. Um, we're going to see more as this story develops, but yeah, there'll be a lot uh, more I, come out I about think it. That that there may be some um, problems here with school officials yeah, also lots, kind of dropping the ball. But yet, what what do you do when you have yeah. so many parents that that do not take responsibility for their children, and you have so many entities out there that that are all for uh, you know the child rights and this and that, yeah. and so. You know, there's such such a muddy, muddy ground there in dealing with yeah. with with rights. Now, I'm of the belief that when it when it comes to a young person yeah. under age that's not of, of legal age, um, you really don't have a lot of of rights in that case. I mean, because you're still the ward of your parents. But that's just me. Well, you know, just a few days ago, there was what a 19-year-old, you know, down mm -hmm. towards Daytona Beach. Mm -hmm. Some of his commentating was that, you know, he wanted to repeat a, a Columbine, you know, a situation. And, you know, it was the friends that turned him in yeah, on social yeah, media. It, it was, it, you know, it was, it was classmates and schoolmates yeah. at this aeronautical college that turned in some of the things that he had posted on Snapchat. Yeah. Now, the difference in this case also is yeah. this is a young adult male that's 19 that's not a ward of his parents living yeah. at home who's enrolled in a in a in a in a college um, yeah. but this kid was accused last year of a sexual assault now it yeah. says that there was a charge made who who knows what became of that uh, uh, apparently, I mean, there's no sign. Well, that's because a lot of sexual assaults kind of get dropped and they forgot do. about and gone away, and you don't really. Right. There's a if, lot of sexual assaults against yeah. females that yeah. are that are done away with and really ignored. Just ignored, yes. And then actually, later on, these people with these uh, mental illnesses go on to to perpetrate other crimes against other people. Well, here's my message in that. I don't care he's 19 years old, he's living on his own. He still has parents somewhere. He still has a family network, a group of people that, you know, love him, you know, that really should be paying more attention to him. Right. I mean, how is it that the friends know more about you than your own, you know, flesh and blood and your own parents, you know, how, how does that happen? People, what's happening is we're allowing our children to be raised on social media and, you know, and that occupies all their time. And then, you know, they get lost in the weeds and, and we're not paying close enough attention that we actually even know our kids anymore. Absolutely. And some parents are okay with their, their children being on social media just because it takes up their time and that's not time they're having to give them. Well, and and I, I think that's part of the destruction of our world today. Well, I really do. It's just there are a lot of the way I feel there, about it. A lot of people out there that don't need to become parents. Well, that's true, but you know. That's, that's just my viewpoint. <laughs> it's, it's not everybody's fact. meant to be a parent in this world. That's true, and I don't want to really just be harping on the parents. You could you could do everything right. You can do everything oh, right, and still things can turn out bad, and still still terrible for you. That's true, but honestly, if you just take that portion or that percentage, that it wouldn't be that way if you paid more close attention and you and you you did practice safety measures. But here's what I'm hearing now coming out of this: it's all about the gun again, and all about the guns. No. You know, it's not the guns. Guns do not shoot themselves. No, they do not. You As know, a matter of fact, I ha I have. The exact same Keltec nine millimeter yeah. that you sure the, do. The, yeah, yeah, I only it's it's pretty. It's a brushed bronze, and I will tell you <laughs> that my brushed bronze folding stock Keltec has never shot anyone. No, it's never gonna shoot anybody. Never gonna shoot um, anybody. I've never had my thirty eight shoot anybody either. Yeah. I haven't had my Glock shoot. I mean, I could just the list is kind of yeah. Long. The, the list is extensive. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, not at all. I'm okay with sensible gun laws, but. The problem for me is when you yeah. add sensible and Democrats together, it just immediately right. becomes not sensible. Well, and right now <laughs> we know. have what about, I don't know, a so random, I don't trust them. 20, I don't 000, trust them. <laughs> around 20,000 yeah. or so gun laws on the books. Yeah. And, and so yeah. it's not a lack of gun laws. Yeah. Um, we, we have more than plenty yeah. gun laws. Yeah. It's, it's a back about sensibility of, of human beings and unfortunately we have a little <laughs> bit of problem with that in our society these days. So, I'm all for yeah. common sense restrictions yeah. on government, yeah. actually on, on yeah, large government <laughs> restrictions. So that would mean yeah. Gavin Newsom would have to go. Yeah. So Well, right. Yeah. On that note. I a whole lot of people can can I'm go. Hungry. All right. I'm hungry too.
Yeah. We're always, always hungry. hungry. We're always right. in with hungry. Hey, listen, you know, we try to do a little something different here. We kind of just kind of spruce it up for Christmas, you know, try to get into the holiday spirit. Check out the little video that we just did, Christmas Lights, The Struggle is Real. I think everybody goes through that entire everybody struggle. Oh, my goodness. It has drives me insane. Christmas lights. Ah, oh, I'd almost rather have my toes chopped off as to have to do that again. But anyway. <laughs> So anyway, just going to tell you that we're so glad that you uh, joined us and we're glad that we hear your comments, see your comments, and reaching out and engaging with us. We appreciate that so much. Just let Go, us know how you feel. Yeah, absolutely. Go over to Pet Snow Politics and check out that. And as always, we'll ask, you know, if you can, reach in your pocket and do a little donation. Absolutely. You know, it helps us keep these babies warm in the winter and it helps us feed them. So, and also helps us keep going and doing what we're doing. So if you like what we say, uh, just, you know, pitch in and help us a little bit. We could really use it. But anyway, other than that, you guys, we want you to have a Merry Christmas and, and we'll, we'll see you next week for yeah. sure. Well, we'll next, see you next week. Yeah, next week. <laughs> then we'll take a little bitty break and maybe go spend some time with family ourselves. So, all right. Well, until next time, we'll see bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.